Hey guys, how's it going? It's nice to see you. I feel like it's been a little while. I was on vacation for about a week and that kind of had me not stream for a week. And then it's two weeks in between streams, which is kind of a long time. So I'm feeling like it's like kind of a fresh start. You know, I'm feeling like this is a new world for me, a little bit, a little bit nervous, a little bit like, what am I doing? What am I going to talk about? <laughs> what are we going to do today? But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Nice to not. What's up, Mr. Wormhole? Yeah, the street workers, the street workers. Somebody pointed out to me that I should probably delete that tweet because somebody could like reverse engineer where I lived or something like that. So I ended up deleting that. But um, yeah, the street workers left. <laughs> they were noisy. It's actually a little bit unfortunate. I've got some construction upstairs, the apartment above mine. They're sort of working on it. So hopefully it won't be too irritating. Um, we'll just have to see. <laughs> if you guys hear a lot of banging, you know what it is. It's the people upstairs. Uh, yeah, you hear that? That's construction, my friends. I was getting kind of like a stereo effect, a little bit of like, you know, construction from up, upstairs and like gas manufacturing machinery or whatever outside, not manufacturing, but you get the idea. So that was a little bit of a mess, huh? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, the upstairs apartment's actually been vacant in my building for like pretty much the entire time of COVID actually. They like left in the beginning. The landlord, I guess, couldn't find anybody to rent because of COVID. So I guess these things happen, but it's been nice. Honestly, they haven't been anybody upstairs and I think they're, they're sort of working on fixing it up so they can re-rent it afterwards. I'm not looking forward to that too much, to be honest. It's been nice having no upstairs neighbors, but hopefully they'll be, they'll be nice people. But um, yeah, so I don't know. I went skiing last week. It was pretty fun. Did a little bit of cross country, a couple days of that. Did a little bit of downhill, a couple days of that. And then I did a hike. So it was, it was good, it was refreshing, you know, getting back to nature a little bit. We've all been sitting indoors for many months. So it, was, it felt pretty fun to get outdoors a little bit, right? I hope you guys have gotten to, to get outdoors a little bit. Um, one plain critique. Uh, Kina. <laughs> Hope you guys can get outside a little bit, even if it's just to take a walk around the block. I noticed that this week when I was back, I was like, didn't leave the house for like a couple days. I'm like, oh my God, I can't get into this mode. I've got to go to the park. Got to get outside. You know, stay active. It's very important. You start to go crazy otherwise, I think. Um, yeah, so... I don't know. Scrolling Reddit and found ski horrors with frostbite. Yeah, you gotta bundle up, man. <laughs> you gotta bundle up. Everybody knows the Null bitmap. Thank you so much because they use joints for the nine months, joints, my friend. Joint, joint, joints, and right to Welcome back. I hope you're doing good. Um, hope you're getting outside if you can a little bit. Hope you're having fun solving some puzzles. You know doing the things. Plenty of outside here, 10K steps every day. That's a lot of steps. A beautiful sub baby has been formed in this time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I kind of want to, um, I don't know if this is gonna be, yeah. I want to spend some time making meme sound effects for my stream. <laughs> Like this one, you know, isn't that such a good sound effect? Like you, something good happens and you're just like, <laughs> I'm going to get into, the, I'm going to get into the meme sound effects. Um, I think it should be pretty good. Um, we'll see if it drives people away, pisses people off too much. Hot debate question that's been tackling your career choices. Yeah, absolutely. Ask it away. If it's a debate question, you mean like little, you know, we, we sort of go to town. I have column A, you have column B. Who was on debate team in high school? I was not. I don't really know what the, uh, the uh, um, you know, format is for debate team stuff. What's up, Panda Wine? Opinions on Rust? Rust seems sweet. I want to do more Rust. I think it's, my opinion is that it seems hard, but that's probably because I haven't spent a lot of time working in it, right? Um, I think that it seems like it would be slower to develop in, but... That's also because I don't know it. <laughs> so 
That's my opinion. It seems sweet though, right? Like we should all learn Rust because it's maybe the future, maybe? Maybe? What do you think? Do you think it's the future? Production ready? Oh, it's definitely production ready. I mean, people are doing so much production stuff in Rust. So much. A lot of it, right? I um, think there's some hobbyists who like work on it because it's cool, but definitely there's a ton of production services in Rust, right? What's up, Safe? Ater opinions on Materialize? Seems like cool tech. It's written in Rust. <laughs> there's an example of a production service written in Rust, right? Uh, been bothered by TypeScript recruiters that look for backend devs for the last three weeks. Do you think that there's a future in TypeScript or JavaScript backend dev work, excluding serverless and GraphQL stuff? Future in TypeScript or JavaScript backend dev work, but not serverless and not GraphQL. Um, I don't know. <laughs> How about that for an answer? I know that there's a lot of backend JavaScript TypeScript stuff these days, right? Like, isn't that still a thing? Like Node.js and everything? I haven't heard that much about it lately though. Like, is it still, is that still super hot? I don't know. Um, TypeScript recruiters that look, yeah, I mean, presumably yes, right? Like I bet big companies are doing that stuff all over the place. I feel like it's safe to say, Mr. Wormhole, that if you're looking for something safe, you should figure out what the big companies are doing and, and like go work for one of those if you can help it, right? And if it's a small company recruiting you and you can tell that their tech is used by big companies and you can do that, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the big companies, they just, they move so slowly that it's like their choices are sort of safe, you know? Rust is future for niche, kind of exciting. C will become more of a, a niche like assembly is. Mainly do backend with Java Go and Python, not because, but not JavaScript, because it looks like elementary school backend all the time, in your opinion. Wow. Dude, don't say that. You're going to go around offending all of the pro JavaScript backend developers. I feel like everything has its niche, right? Like, you, you can't just assume that it is bad because it looks bad, right? Like, there's got to be a lot of, you know, impressive and interesting technology stuff going on with JavaScript in the backend, I would say. <laughs> Nikon says, I used to do a lot of work for TypeScript. Growing ecosystem, huge pain in the butt. There's a future, but it now in TypeScript. 30% of our 900 microservices in Node.js written in TypeScript. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So Mr. Wormhole, you got your answer. There's there's uh, 300 microservices written in TypeScript waiting for you <laughs> at OnePlane's company. If you go work for one plane, you're gonna be working on 300 different microservices all in JavaScript. So it seems like a pretty good choice, right? You're gonna, that's like some money. They're gonna pay you for that. That's a lot of microservices to maintain. You know, like if those people quit, <laughs> you're gonna be in bad trouble. So what's up, Brohanster? Scala is big, C-sharp. JavaScript. <laughs> Null bitmap loves JavaScript. Congrats for the Series E. Yeah, it's exciting. Cockroach TV is a bicorn somehow. Cannot tell these recruiters that what they work on is so basic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bro, Hanser is like the referral master to Stanford now. <laughs> Did you get any more ideas on what your new ORM would look like? Yeah, that's a good question. I got into a pretty good Twitter conversation I thought about RMs and what would a great RM look like? And the answer is no, I have no idea. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, I, I, I basically think that um, uh, I like the concept of Juke. Juke is sweet, right? Juke is like the most lightweight kind of thing that you can make that lets you construct queries in a natural way. Um, but it doesn't like force you into an, a crazy object model where the objects are somehow like bound to actual database things and you can dot save them and it does a transaction, right? Like that, that seems like a little bit too out of control, right? Uh, I think that that's where people get into trouble, right? They have th these objects that do magic things when you just do a method on them. I think that's the idea, like if we could just strip out that part of ORMs, right? The like magic parts and make it really explicit then? I mean, what would be the problem, right? Like, would people still complain? I don't think so. Go embedded DSL for SQL. What's up, peak 9117? Um, so you're talking about kind of like a link sort of thing, right? I think when people talk about 
SQL EDSLs, they're really talking about link um, or link queue or however you say it. I think it would be sweet. I mean, if I don't know if that's like a thing that people are working on. Is that is that has been proposed like a DSL inside of Go for SQL stuff? Um, I'm not sure, but it seems good. It seems exciting. I mean, the, the Juke people responded to my tweet and they were like, maybe we should port Juke to other languages. I'm like, yes, that, that would be cool, right? <laughs> um, I don't know, guys. Yeah, I would like to work on some of that stuff, but I just don't know. It's like, these things are huge pro projects. Esqualito? I haven't seen Esqualito. What is that? Esqualito. Are you talking about the jewelry shop? Okay, let's take a look at what kind of stuff they've got for sale here at Esquilito. Looks like you can Everybody get knows that relational database Faust. Scale, Thank you so much for the two months. Joins, 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 and right to disk. I really appreciate that, Faust. Welcome back. C Films. It's been a second. What is up? Nice to see you. Okay, you mean a Haskell thing, Esquilito. I kind of like the jewelry, to be honest, but uh, I'm down with Haskell too, right? Type save EDSL for SQL queries on persistent backends. Bare bones, type save EDSL for SQL queries. It means skeleton in Portuguese. It contains all three SQL letters in the correct order. <laughs> uh... Okay, so it's kind of like, yeah, you can write SQL inside of your Haskell, right? I don't know Haskell, so I don't know what this means, to be honest, but like, this seems sweet. Okay, so do, maybe this means assign to people, select from table person, which is like a back quote thing. And then you have an arrow in the other direction. Oh my God. Okay, I'm guys, to be honest, I'm already scared. There's, there's ASCII arrows in two different directions on this example. Oh no, double arrow, okay. And then you return a person and then it turns into people and there's like a lift. Okay, this is too hard. I can't figure it out, I'm too newbie. I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a Haskell Loby. <laughs> you just use a Mona Evil. Okay, so here we have a cash app thing, SQL Delight. Oh, it's a Lambda. Okay, that makes sense actually. Sort of. Haskell people love saying the types make it easy, then they construct types longer than their program. <laughs> okay, so here we have something called SQL Delight, which is a Kotlin thing. Kotlin seems like the hotness, right? Kotlin is like the, the, the fresh Java. Okay. So for example, it takes a schema Hockey player, ID integer not null primary key auto increment, name text not null, number integer not null. And then it, oh my God, you like click something in it and it makes a function for you. Uh, let's go to their website here. Okay, the website has the same thing as the readme. Oh, I see. You sort of like write your SQL and then you like right click. So it's like maybe some sort of like IDE integration kind of thing. I mean, it seems cool, I guess. It's like writing huge macros and then implement using just that macro. Type level programming. Dude, is this the like the song from the, is this like Windows? Isn't that the Windows sound? I'm going to get DMCA'd for the window sound. <laughs> this is a sick song. I love this song. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. All right. All right. Bill Gates is going to come after me after he's finished, like, fighting the coronavirus or whatever he's up to these days. Um, okay. So, basically, you guys, I have a bad confession to make, which is that 
this stream has has made me have a terrible habit called opening like one billion partially complete PRs and never finishing them. Because <laughs> I sort of work on them on stream and then I don't have time to finish them during the week when I'm at work and stuff like that. So <laughs> I was thinking that what I would do a little bit today is go through and like clean up some of this old crap um, because it's like really out of date and probably not useful anymore. And I was thinking maybe I'd do a couple of um, bug fixes maybe. 488 PRs, yeah, this is the sort of thing, right? Like, yeah, people just open these things and don't clean them out. It's not that it's like, I don't think that these things are like pending review really. It's more like pending deletion for the most part. Or people will do like a work in progress and leave it there as like a record of what they were do doing maybe. More than like they're actually trying to merge and stuff. I don't know. In any way, it's kind of a mess. So I was thinking I would at least start with getting rid of some of the things that I did because I feel like, <laughs> I don't know. You, you know, change starts with yourself, right? Um. Okay, so what the heck is this thing about, huh? I can show off the features too. Okay, so that'll be fun, right? You guys know about CockroachDB? <laughs> so with CockroachDB, you can open it with Cockroach Demo, and then you have this demo, right? So that's what I'm gonna play with that a little bit. So I think the idea with this PR that I did in February of last year, about one year ago, was what? Um... So there's a thing, show tables. Y'all kids heard of <laughs> Y'all kids heard of cockroach DB? Y'all get any got got any of that cockroach DB? Um Okay, so let's say I was doing something, right? Uh select star from users, join rides. Wait. What's inside of, how do you write SQL? Who, who knows how to write SQL at this chat, chat room? Um, okay, you got your users, you got your user ID. Show create rides. How do we link these puppies together? Got them little example schema. Okay, so let's say select star from users, join rides on users.id equals rides.rider ID, right? Okay, got a basic join over here. Pretty exciting stuff where users.id is equal to uh, uh, who knows how to make a UUID? Hold on, select UUID v4, no. Oh, that did work, sick. Okay, so let's just like, you know, maybe, maybe cast this thing to a UUID. We can get it, I just want an example query so we can t talk about stuff. Uh, do I use Colmac? No, I don't, that'd be sick though. I just, I'm a, I'm a QWERTY basic low B. <laughs> okay, so, so this PR was about this thing called Explain Vec. Explain Vec, the idea, it was this debugging tool that we wrote for the vectorized engine, which kind of shows you like the different operators that are used for a vectorized flow. Um, basically what this means is that well, you know, you can see it, right? Materializer turns the vectorized stuff into rows. This is a projection. This is some disk spilling stuff in case we need to spill the disk. You got the hash joiner, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. This isn't like so important necessarily. It's kind of an internal debugging tool. And I think the idea with this PR was that I wanted to like make this work a little bit better, but I just don't really think that it needs to be here. Yeah, you guys heard that car getting stolen? <laughs> um, you're on Vorex Scuff the Shortcuts? It's CockroachDB. Eduyayalolo. How to decide which ORMs are good? Can it do third level deep join equals good ORM? I feel like, can't like all the ORMs do super deep level joins and that's kind of like what the problem with the ORMs is? Like it's too easy to do crazy stuff? I don't know. Um, this just seems abandoned. <laughs> I 
Well, let's uh. <laughs> well, let's ask somebody else. Maybe Yohor is here. I don't know. Maybe he knows what this is about and whether we need it. How's the SSPL mess being thought about in CockroachDB? So I'm guessing SSPL is like the Elasticsearch stuff that, I, to be honest, I haven't exactly um, um, digested that information yet, one plane. I don't know what it means. I feel like there's a lot of different takes on it on Twitter and stuff, but I don't know. I haven't really like figured out what I think about it all yet. What do you think about it? Do you think, I mean, I, one take was that like, it was sort of a questionable decision to do that for them because it meant that Amazon is now the like main fork of these software projects, which people feel uncomfortable about. Like Amazon now controls the Apache 2 versions of this stuff, which like maybe feels bad. I should update that project thing. Um, commands, edit, project, doing some project cleanup for cockroach db they're being dicks about it but not doing something illegal yeah well they definitely can't do something illegal because they're so big that um they would definitely get into trouble right single threaded backend big corporations have too much power and there's no way to fight it yeah i mean yeah i think I don't know what I think. Move URL outputter from SQL for reuse. I think I'm gonna close this. This was for, this is from 2019. I mean, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna close this. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. The open distro thing is going to be a pain for us. We had decided on using open distro because it was open and free and now it's going down. What is open distro again? Open distro. Oh. Apache 2 license distribution of Elasticsearch. Oh, is this the one that Amazon is now gonna take over? Yeah, this is the one that Amazon is now sort of upstreamed, right? Hey, Krasio, thanks for the follow. AWS does selective upstreaming, so it's not like they're not helping at all. It's just hard to see a large company make a bunch of money. Creators getting little nothing out of it. Yeah, it's super dramatic, dude. The software world loves drama. <laughs> Does Cockroach TV use a binary search anywhere? Like the classical binary search algorithm anywhere? I think it probably does, yeah. Um, that would be easy to find out. Let's find out. Because um, I think if you if you use sort.search, which is Go's binary search implementation, then it's a binary search. Check it out. So many binary searches, we use them all over the place. Check out this thing. Here's something called the latch interval B tree. I don't exactly know what it is, but it sounds like seriously legit. Right guys? <laughs> oh man, that is problematic. I think we might have to just, you know, concede. You've heard of it, but you've never used it in any project. I think binary search, that's one of those things that like people tend to kind of ask you a lot of the time when you're interviewing places, they're like, write a binary search or like they sort of expect you to know what it is if not write it. It's like a good one to know about at least. Disclosure with plenty of clients, we use both self-hosted and AWS hosted elastic searches and we're fine either way. So I have nothing to gain or lose no matter what. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I don't know. I'm guessing that most people don't have like that much to 
gain or lose with this stuff. It's sort of just like interesting to know what um, the world is up to. Most programming languages have it in their libraries. Yeah, that is definitely true. You don't really need to like re-implement it yourself. It's just good to know like what it's for and why you'd want to use it, I think. Okay, so we've done one good thing, guys. We've deleted one old PR. <laughs> How about that? All right. Um, why did I abandon all this stuff, you guys? It's so frustrating to me. So frustrating to me. Add eval table test. It's a mode for the eval data-driven test that replaces constants with each test expression with column references into a table that's possible. What? Why did I just abandon this? Ugh. Everybody knows it's so frustrating. Databases don't MD Layer, thank you so much joins, for the nine months. Joins, 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 How's it going? And right to disk. Um, you know what? <clears throat> this is how I feel about that. <laughs> yes. The meme soundboards, dude. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, looks at all my half finished projects. Yeah, I know the feeling. Isn't binary search simply a sorted binary tree? You simply keep going in to the direction of your desired value and then BFS to. Yeah, basically. I mean, you can. I think when people talk about binary search, they might either mean everybody knows that kind of like. Don't scale. Hey, Jose Luis Z Unflores, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming subscription. Um, I think that when people think about binary search, right, it's like you can think of it inside of an array. That's one way that people do it. But I think like they're sort of the same thing. You can think of a sorted array of stuff as a binary tree kind of, or you can like turn one into the other. So I'd say they're sort of equivalent. Um, depending on what you're doing, you can either do it inside of an array or inside of a tree if you've built one, but basically the same idea one way or the other. Just like, you know, partitioning that space into two recursively Up for network or database puns. A TCP reset on it? <laughs> Is that a pun? <laughs> Am I too stupid to understand that pun? Quite possibly. Um, should I, re should I resurrect this? This seems sort of useful, I guess. Eval test. <laughs> the old out of order UDP jokes. I love that, Preston. You're you're gonna gain a lot of nerd cred if you keep making jokes like that. You got so you guys have it. You ha guys have it. You have to just make jokes, make some out of order jokes. You know, some off by one error jokes, and you're really gonna be like racking in that credit. And if you can post them on Twitter. With some like image memes, you're gonna it's gonna be all the better. Okay, uh, what happened here? Here's the merge conflicts here. Um, it looks like we don't. Uh, <laughs> um, hmm. Well, it might not be so bad, honestly. Who's up for resolving some conflicts? That's always a fun thing to do. Resolve some conflicts. I don't want to become the peep, the kind of person who just has 10 million freaking unfinished projects. You know, I don't like that. I want to either delete them or <laughs> resurrect them. Uh, redo the changes on latest? Yeah, maybe, but I think it's just sort of these conflicts are kind of just like somebody added to the end and then I added to the end. So you just have to reorder that, right? So we're going to try that out. Have you guys ever used a, a graphical? Um, conflict resolution tool uh i have and it's it's been pretty good when i remember to use this thing it's like it's actually like pretty decent not that it's called resolve conflicts get merge tool is nice i haven't isn't that doesn't that sort of need another program though Um, 
Well, these imports we can fix just by like deleting them all and resurrecting them, right? It's pretty easy. If you save this and it'll like fix themselves up, right? Ooh, SQL base got deleted. That's a good one. Okay, so down here, I guess the idea is that somebody added a new subtest here, so we can just delete these conflict markers and hopefully we can add our new test just to the end. Maybe. Wait. Actually, uh, table data. Um, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let's just, uh, let's just uh, hold on a second here. <laughs> So what was the intent of this? We added, I think this exists on both sides. This thing may or may not exist on both sides. All we did is add this. Table data thing, right? Oh, I remember what this is. This was actually kind of a cool idea. Basically like it, searches for an expression, it makes a table that contains the expression, it inserts the constants inside of the table, and then it like reruns the query against the table's data to make sure that the expression works the same in both contexts, like in an expression context versus like a table data context. How many Go routines can you start before Go screams at you? I think like a lot, it probably depends on your working memory more than anything else. I feel like maybe this is actually not worth my time. This sort of seems like a cool idea, but I don't know guys, right? Like, I just don't even remember. This is why you wanna finish projects quickly. Cause I think that there was like a good reason to do this at the time. Like we probably had some bug that depended on, or like would have been caught by this, but I don't remember what the bug was. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Let me just undo this for a quick second. I think we can try to, I think we can try to fix this up. It's code that should work, so we should add it. It's test code too, right? It's like always a fine idea to add test code, right guys, right? Um, parent of, who knows, who knows how to use the three-way conflict markers though? Like I kind of forget which side is which here, to be honest. Oh, I see, so this is the old side, you can delete it. Goodbye. Wait, is it? I'm so confused. I think, wait a minute. Does that mean that we deleted most of this actually? Does that mean that we deleted most of this? It very well might. Hold on a sec. What if we um? What if we just look at what, what uh, what's on master right now? Would that help? Git show master package sql sem tree eval test dot go. Um. It looks like we just 
deleted most of this. Okay, I take it back. I think that this code is now dead and should be destroyed with prejudice. Goodbye. We'll abort the rebase. Um, we'll say this is now super out of date. So I'm going to just close it. All right. Disable GC job print statement timings. So it sounds like what this was about, so we have these logic tests, right? We, uh, we talk about them quite a bit in the stream. Um, there are sort of these end-to-end -end tests that take SQL and assert what the SQL does. Very high level, not really a unit test. It sounds like this was kind of about, can we speed these things up and make it more easy to debug? Um, kind of seems like the idea with this is that I wanted to turn off some background jobs so that the whole thing would move a little bit more quickly, but then it turns out it was negligible. Um, so it sounds like the end result was really just printing these timings. So was that useful? Was that useful? Yes or no? This was literally just a logging change. <laughs> So I think I'll delete this too. This doesn't seem useful anymore. Uh, this is super out of date, so closing. Wish, had, wish I had that much confidence when running Git. You'll get used to it over time. Trouble to check that you don't break anything. The secret about Git is that you don't, you, it's very hard to actually break anything. Um, you have to be like kind of trying because they, they've got this ref log thing, right? As long as you're adding files and then committing them, uh, it's really hard to like lose that work. So you can always like, you know about the ref log, but even force doesn't really break things, right? Like here, I've got this ref log. This shows me all of the different commits that I was at over time. They're not even necessarily on branches, right? That's what this thing is. And so if I said, you know, let's say I was like on master and I was like, get reset hard head, you know, I like go back in time. I'm like, oh crap, master is now dead. You know, even if I didn't have this origin master remote thing, what I can do is I can hit my get ref log. And so you see up here at up top, it's like reset moving to head tilde, 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 tilde. The thing before it, this head at one ref, that's where I was. So no matter what, I can always like get back to that by doing get reset hard and sticking that Sha again. And this, this doesn't even have to have like a, a reference pointing to it. You know, even if I like, check this out, this is a good trick, right? Let's like add this random thing here that I don't have checked in for some reason. Get commit. So I have this commit, right? I'm like, yay, I've got a new commit. Um, and then I like, you know, reset here to head tilde. And I didn't ever have a branch pointing at that commit, right? So you might think that this is now lost forever right? Because it's not pointed at by any branch. But thanks to the ref log, you can always get back to it. So you go up here, you can see, oh, here it is. It's secretly here. There's no refs pointing at it, but I can still grab it and get back to it. So that's a good trick for you. Whoops. Good trick for you uh, if you are nervous about losing stuff in Git. <laughs> Check out to a new branch and keep it safe. That is true. Um, but again, even if you, if you, even if you forget to do that, you can usually escape your problems by using the ref log. Okay. Um, oh yeah, there was this listen, notify, unlisten project. That was cool. I'm sad that I never finished that. I would like to get back to that at some point. I don't know. Um... Leak test added out of band skip mechanism. Oh yeah. So this was kind of an interesting idea. Basically like, how do you deal with 
flaky tests as a company. That's what this was about, right? Like if you get flaky tests, you don't want flaky tests in the first place, right? But let's say like one gets introduced by accident. Um, how do you get people to like fix that quickly so that other people can still be merging their code despite the flaky tests failing? There's like several ideas that you can do here. Like one is that you could revert the change, but that's kind of slow. You have to put it through CI. You could like skip the test. That's also slow. You have to go through CI. And I was thinking that what you could do is have like an out of band map that allowed you to like, yeah, I mean, inject a skip, right? Without having to merge anything to the code. Um, so I made this little proof of concept and I guess, I guess we don't want to use it. So I might just, um, should we delete this? I don't know. I mean, so I could like always, if we really wanted to do this, I could always like resurrect it. So I think I'll just close it. <clears throat> seems like we really don't. Seems like we are sticking with skipping tests actively. So I'll just close this for now. Um, yeah, goodbye. Do I delete branch? I'll leave the branch undeleted, even though I'm going to regret that later. <laughs> okay. Call exec test finite chunks op does not allocate anymore. Yeah, the notify thing was one of my first dream projects for sure. I do want to get back to that. Um, this commit, okay, so the benchmarks. Um, getting badly skewed by the amount of work that finite chunk. This is like for benchmarking vectorized operators. And I guess the idea here was that when we make data up front for the operators to look at, we end up allocating once per op. And this was changing it to do a big allocation up front so that the benchmarks don't have to allocate during them. Um, looks like I never finished this either. I don't know why. Sad, dude, sad. I just don't know. This is like this is like a sad retrospective for me. I'm like, like I never finished any projects. Uh, let's see if we can resurrect this one or see why it didn't work in the first place. Why don't we just at least rebase it and then push it again? Maybe like CI failed in a weird way and I never like dealt with it. That is often a reason why I abandon a project. It's because I like like get discouraged by some tests and then like forget to do anything about it. Um so yeah, look I have this commit called blah on top of this thing. So like what the heck dude? What is that? What is blah? <laughs> I think that I'm gonna just take this blah to mean that this is not worth resurrecting and I'm gonna delete it. Um not sure what happened here, but this is badly out of date. Closing. A little spring cleaning, you know? This is like a little bit of a, a little bit of a January spring cleaning. <laughs> um, okay. Set methods on native type slices. I think we're gonna do this anyway, but I'm just gonna. Is my entire day just going through these GitHub issues? No, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, my official job at work, true job for me is I'm a manager. Um, so I don't spend a lot of time going through GitHub issues during the week. I mean, I spend a decent amount of time. I guess that's not exactly true, but like, uh, I, I like masquerade as an IC on my stream. <laughs> this is kind of the way that I look at it. <laughs> Dan's game of management. Yeah. There's some good things, some bad things about it, for sure. Um, improve error message for search path with commas. What happened to this?
So check this out. <laughs> if I say set search path, so you guys know about the search path. The search path is this thing that allows you to change where your table names are resolved from. So if I said, let's say, I'll make some schemas here. Well, first I make a table, create table A, A and primary key. And if I made a schema, which is kind of like a namespace, and I made another table called A inside of this S schema, S dot A, A and primary key. The question is like, how do I, oops, create table. How do I like pick which one of these I'm gonna resolve? By default, um, my search path has two things in it. It's got this user thing, which basically means a schema that's got my name in it, <laughs> um, which I guess in this case is demo. And then public, which is sort of the default schema. But if I were to add set search path is equal to s comma public, I think the idea here is I can say select star from A and that's gonna be this particular table. Um, but I think what was pretty confusing is that if I accidentally said set, set search path is equal to s comma public like this, um, yeah, it just gets really funky. So I think this PR was about improving this error message a little bit to not be so gross looking. This project has a lexer. Yeah, definitely. So SQL, um, it's a pretty difficult language to lex and parse. Um, so it's got this whole giant thing for that. I think... Yeah, I think the more exciting thing is probably the parser. I don't know if you're familiar with the difference, but the lexer is just kind of this thing that tokenizes stuff and takes a word and turns it into like another representation of a word. The parser is sort of how all of those statements that I'm typing in the SQL shell get turned into an abstract syntax tree. Um, why is it so dominant? What do you mean? Um, this one I think I can resurrect. I think I just sort of forgot to respond to these comments here. So let's let's uh, let's do this one. Let's try that one. How about we resurrect one PR today? Let's get check out fix search path error. Oh, oh, then why is SQL so dominant? Now you have databases that are SQL and if they aren't, then they get no SQL. Yeah, it's just because I think SQL is a really popular and effective way at managing data. I guess that's kind of how I would say it. Um, it's uh, it's more of just a, more, more than a language. It's really like a paradigm, like relational model, tables that have links to each other and are sort of have these referential constraints. That That concept is really mostly expressed inside of SQL. Um, I think there's other languages that let you have relational constraints, but they're not nearly as popular. So I, I, and I think having relational constraints between your data is such a popular concept that's useful for developers that SQL ends up being like a really touch point of a concept, if you know what I mean. So a dominant concept to use your language there. Um, does that make sense? Is CockroachDB hiring right now? Yes, CockroachDB is hiring right now. Um, you can check out our careers website for more information about that. And say you can say that I sent you. <laughs> Cockroachlabs.com slash careers. Paste this, this buddy down into the chat. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's figure out what the deal is with this PR. Um, Get show. So I added a hint and Solon said, it might be nicer to make this a hint with errors dot with hint. Yeah, I think that is definitely true. That seems like an easy enough thing to fix. So let's go and fix it. Bars dot go. Um, Search path. I should get an affiliate link equivalent for hiring requests. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, 
That is a very good point. <laughs> okay, so I think the idea here, it's actually pretty neat. Um, you can get errors that have hints in it. Um, Everybody knows that Crazio, thank you so much for the Prime subscription. Joins, joins, join, join, join. I very much appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, enjoy your emote. <laughs> enjoy your emote. So let's see. Errors dot with hint. How does this thing work? Hint F. Hint. Or hint F. Do 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 do. Everybody knows. Oh my gosh. This is getting out of control. Lithium. Thank you so much joins, for the six joins, months joins, of joins, subscription. And right to this. Really appreciate it. Uh, how are you doing, Lithium? Nice to see you. Why does a database point to another database's docs? I don't know what you're talking about, Preston. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna return nothing, and then the error is gonna be with hint. We're gonna wrap this thing. What is this issue anyway? You got your first shot. Wow, congrats. That is exciting. That is truly exciting. I hope everybody is planning to get vaccines here, right guys? You're all planning to do it. I see, so this is just sort of a piece of information about what we do or do not support. Postgres above the search path thing. Yeah, exactly. It's a, sort of just like, um, Postgres has got great docs, <laughs> so if we can uh, if we can manage it, I think it's not such a bad idea to link to theirs. Um, so, schema name has comma, so it is not supported in the search path. Period. Okay, so then we're gonna wrap that with a hint. Um, the hint's gonna be like this. Did you mean to omit quotes? This is gonna be a hint app for sure. This needs a wrapping parentheses. Um, uh, okay. Okay, let's try this out. Let's try this out. I think it should be pretty decent. Although this is going to take forever. Okay, let's let's uh, boot up our remote machine. How about that? Um, a remote machine is going to let us compile stuff and not have it take like 10 million years. We'd love to do that on the stream here. I should write a program that scrapes URLs from CockroachDB source code and stores them in a database just in case. Hmm. I like that, Lithium. That's a little bit of a dog fooding attitude. <laughs> we do love a good dog fooding attitude in the software world, right? Okay, nice. So we've got our little remote machine here. Let's uh, go to the right directory. Um, why don't we let's commit this? You've got a perfect project to use CockroachDB? That's amazing. I love that. What is it? Write a database in SQL. Are you talking about a, a meta syntactic database? So you're talking about like, let's implement SQL inside of SQL. That'd be sick, dude. Um, what is going on with this? Like a self-hosted SQL database. I think that's, that's something that people love to do with traditional languages. I think it would be a little bit difficult to do inside of SQL, <laughs> but <laughs> 
People have done some pretty crazy stuff with SQL, right? Some like funny hacks and stuff. Uh... Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like now. Someone wrote a ray tracer in CMake. Anything is possible. I think that, I mean, not to belittle that, which sounds extremely difficult, but I think that it would be significantly harder to write a SQL database inside of SQL <laughs> than a ray tracer inside of CMake. CMake, I think, is a much more powerful language than SQL, right? It sounds more impressive than it is. Something for medical clinics, orchestrate people in parking lots instead of waiting rooms. Uses geolocation and whatnot, simple products, some other features. That sounds really cool and also relevant. You could really, you know, capture some hearts and minds right now here in COVID times. Ray tracing is just a few loops and intersection formulas. I did some of that in college. I took a graphics class. It was super fun. Um, did you guys get ever get into, there's this thing called Pavre. Do you guys know about this thing? I spent a lot of time as a kid playing around with this. Um, it's like a, you can basically like specify instructions for the ray tracer in a little code language thing. And then the computer will do the ray tracing. But it, what's kind of neat about it is that it's a language for describing objects, I guess or something like that. Where's like a example here? Docs. Tutorial. Okay, getting started. So you, you like learn about some coordinate systems. You like learn some of this stuff. You put your camera in a location. You make an object, you make a sphere. You put its coordinates, you put its texture. You do a bunch of other crap, light sources, shapes, and then eventually, come on, you gotta give us the picture. Okay, it doesn't give us a picture, but basically it's an easy way to like, you know, make a blob in a black sort of void. <laughs> eh. That was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's check out our demo here. Let's see if things are improved now. Um, so we're gonna say set search path is equal to foo bar. Oops. Unimplemented schema name foo bar has comma so it is not supported in search path. You have attempted to use a feature. Did you mean to omit quote set search path equals foo comma bar? I did mean to do that. Thank you, you helpful hint. Okay, this is much better. Um, I feel good about it. So let's go ahead and bores this puppy. Okay, we're making progress, guys. We did it. We 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 did one small thing. Um, switch internal executor to iterator pattern. This is important. This is important. Push cfetcher into MVC scanner. This was a really cool project. Didn't finish it. <laughs> Add batches red. Track optimizer cost and app stats. I think we decided not to do this, right? I think I'm gonna close this. Um, we've decided that we don't really want to be showing optimizer cost in the UI. So I'll close this one. Oh yeah, this, I really wanna get back to fixing this. Mm. Logic test, add retriable subtest. We ended up working around this in a different way. This was basically a problem that was causing various, uh, 
basically like if you get certain if you get a retriable error in a logic test it like causes havoc because the logic tests don't really know how to restart a transaction and so the idea here was that we could teach the logic test to retry itself um How come I didn't finish this one? I feel like this was a good one. Let's let's resurrect this one. Okay, so this is about a gauge, so a, a time series metric that kind of keeps track of these outstanding SQL leases. Um, this is an important thing because um, understanding how many things are leasing a table is a useful metric to figure out what's going on in your database's performance if things are kind of acting funky. We've seen a few times that if you end up in a situation where your leases are sort of thrashing, the performance of the database can really suffer. And I thought that adding this gauge would kind of help with that problem. So I think that I was close on this and I don't know why I never finished it. So I'm gonna check that guy out and see if I can finish it up. I think I just need to add this thing to set this chart catalog business, which is like, basically we test that Char uh, metrics are sufficiently documented, I think is the idea. And then it should be good to go. <clears throat> Andrew wants me to write a test too. I could probably write a test for this. Um, it's interesting. We were actually just talking about how we don't have easy ways to test these gauges. So I'm going to look into that. That's going to be an interesting thing to look into. So let's take a look. What was this? What had this PR? We added a new thing. Here's our new outstanding leases gauge. Here's our documentation for it. Okay, so I didn't add this to the chart catalog, but I can do that quite easily. Start with that chart catalog. Chart catalog represents a catalog of predefined admin UI charts to aid users in debugging CockerDB clusters. First of all, this is now called the DB console, so I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> um, simplified structure of the catalog. It's not really clear that we get all that much value out of this thing anymore, but I mean, I'm not gonna delete it right now, <laughs> for sure. Um, gossip, merge queue, ranges. It's gotta be like a SQL section, right? SQL layer, schema changer. This seems like a good spot. So we're gonna, let's see. Uh, Do I need no triggers? Yeah, hope not. Okay, so the title of this is going to be uh, Outstanding SQL Leases, and the metric is gonna be whatever we call this thing, sql.leases.active, sql.leases.active. There you go, easy peasy. Now the question is, can we test this? Can we test this? Um,
Preston, uh, these are metrics for people who are running cockroach. These are not like, wait, what? Going to keep track of people. Oh, you're talking the lithium. A faster real-time database? I think cockroach is a very appropriate database for uh, this use case, actually. I don't think that anything, here's a rule of thumb, is that like anything that's like people scale is like a reasonable, it's like not going to be that high throughput, if you know what I mean. Like there's two, there's sort of a people scale thing where like every thing that you're saving is issued by a human being um, versus things where everything that you're saving is issued by a machine in a sense. And I, in general, I would say that a rule of thumb is that like you can be fine with any, pretty much any kind of database uh, if it's a people scale action. I mean, things change if you like are really scaling up and you have like, you know, Twitter is technically a, sequ a, a people scale application. It has quite a lot of throughput because so many people use Twitter. But for the most part, you know, when you're starting out with a project, you're not going to have as many users as Twitter does. Okay, so sql.leases.active. Where do I define this thing? In the lease lease.go. So can I make a test for this? People scale applications need data processing, scaling jobs, triggers, reports. Absolutely true. Um, so we can call this test outstanding leases metric. Latency of average time of reading and writing. I mean, it depends on all sorts of stuff, but like you can sort of look at single digit milliseconds depending on what kind of stuff you're talking about. Um, Single node compared to Oracle, Microsoft SQL. Yeah, so Cockroach isn't really just designed to be deployed in a single node configuration. And so when people benchmark single node Cockroach versus single node database that's designed to be deployed in single node, it's not really an apples to apples thing. Um, and we also lose. <laughs> so of course I say that, but um, the whole point of Cockroach is that you can scale it out. So there's some overhead that goes away as you scale. Um, okay, so how are we going to test test outstanding leases metric? I think the first thing we'll start a test cluster, right? And the question is, can you actually test this metric? I just don't know. The idea about testing a metric would be like, can I poke at this metric dot gauge thing? I mean, it kind of seems like I can. It like literally has this value thing, but can I can I not get it out? I've got an update. Oh, it's got a value. It seems like I can test this. Hmm. It seems like I can test this just fine, actually. Um, so all I have to do then is see if I can get one of these storage things. Where is this stored? It's inside of a lease manager. Okay. Um. I mean, You definitely need a database, right? Because you got to store it. You got to persist it.
I need to figure out <clears throat> who like owns this lease manager thing. It goes into disk SQL CFG. Hmm. So can I <laughs> yeah, you can just persist it on paper. I like the way you think. That's brilliant. Persist in memory? Dude, that makes no sense. What happens when you restart your program? Can I not get into the... You just have to weep at that point? To SQL Server. I see. So then I can cast this thing to SQL dot server impl dot CFG. No, this is so annoying. This is like one of the most annoying things about this whole testing stuff is like reaching deep inside these structs to find the stuff that you need. Oh, there it is. It's the lease manager. Lease manager. And then I can cast this to a... <clears throat> Isn't there like a lease manager thing that we expose in this very own, that very package? Oh, but this is a... Mm, frustrating. So this is, since this is an underscore test package... Um, you can't look at private variables inside of the things inside of lease. So make it serializable and save it to disk. <laughs> then you're going to be reinventing a database, Preston. Preston, I think that you need to learn a little bit about why people like databases. And I think a good way to do that is to practice doing what you say, making vectors serializable, saving them to disk, and then rereading them later. <laughs> you'll, you'll quickly hit some pain points with that approach there. <laughs> Sounds like MongoDB. What's up, regex generator? I'm so confused. How many? I think we have several things called lease manager. <laughs> That's confusing me. I don't think this is the right kind of lease manager. We need to be looking at Oh, it's just called lease dot manager. I see. Okay, so let's just try this one more time. So in server SQL, we say lease manager equals new lease manager. And then we set it inside of this thing, which is the disk SQL CFG. Ah, this needs to be changed. This is a lease dot manager. Hey, Yohor, how's it going? tcs.server0.lease manager. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you so you so I can. Thank you for that. Um Okay. Okay, so then then I'm in a better, better place and this I think is a star. Right. And then I guess the question is 
can I figure out a way to export this gauge so that I can touch its value without having to... I mean, I suppose I could just export it. It's not the worst thing. Oh, it's so annoying that this is like an interface because it means that your code completer doesn't really work well. Um, okay. Oh, it's inside of this storage thing. I feel like that's not very good. Outstanding leases. Uh, testing gauges. Testing gauges. It's difficult. Yohor, we were just talking about whether we could test a gauge. And I think that the answer is that you can test a gauge. You just have to dot value it, and then you can test it. Um, so... Oh, but maybe the maybe the metric you were looking at testing wasn't actually a gauge. Maybe it was a different kind of metric, and that's why it was difficult. The gauges are easy. Maybe the other things are not so easy. Um, okay, well, I suppose I could just make a method that returns the gauge. Why don't I just do that for now? I don't know. We can prefix it with testing, so that seems fine. <laughs> Testing, uh, return, outstanding. Testing, outstanding, leases, gauge. Mostly with whether we did testing these metrics somewhere thought we didn't yeah yeah i don't know that's a fair fair point um turns the outstanding leases gauge that is used by this lease manager Um, okay, so then back in our test, we can get our gauge, right? And then theoretically, we can say tc dot cons dot sub zero dot exec context ctx is equal to context dot background. We can just say something like, we can make a table, create table a, a in primary key. Um, sort that there's no error, and then we can say, tc.cons zero dot exec context context select star from a and then hopefully we would see the gauge go up right um i'm a little concerned that we're gonna have some like problems with like flakiness with this because i wonder if this changes depending on random internal stuff as well but i'm not sure let's uh we can try it out i guess we'll grab the gauge why don't we we'll grab the gauge here We'll say um, outstanding leases is equal to gauge dot value. And down here we'll say um, if um, after query is equal to outstand or gauge dot value again. And if we say if after query minus f, ah, this is so racy. I mean, I feel like this is pretty bad, honestly. If it's not equal to one, then cert dot uh, t dot fail, is it error f? Um, expected one outstanding lease found d. actual I don't know I do think this is gonna be racy and bad but let's um we can try it 
Um, okay. Add uh, a test. Plan to make more systems tables leasable. I think you might be right about internal queries making this non-deterministic. Yeah. See, I don't know what quite to do about this. I think like one thing I could do is just not test this. Um, the other thing that I could do is write a more unit style test that just used the lease manager directly. Um, but I'm not sure how easy it is to use one of these things in a unit test context. And in fact, I'm just not sure whether that would be an effective test at all. It might be sort of just asserting truth in a sense. Um, it seems pretty complicated to use this in a unit testing style context, but, well, maybe not. But how do you like inject it with all of its dependencies? It, it needs to have a storage, needs to have some maps, needs to have a name cache. I mean, like, I don't know. Oh, well, there's a constructor here and it needs to take a context, node ID, a deep, it needs to take a DB. So that's annoying. It needs to take an entire internal executor. I don't know. I think it would be sort of annoying to set this up in a really unit testable fashion. Can check the con executor type to see whether the query is internal or not. Um, I think the trouble is just that this, basically trying to test this gauge that unconditionally gets incremented when anybody acquires any SQL lease. So I, I don't know if that would really be, I mean, one, I, I suppose one thing is that we could theoretically discriminate these this metric based on internal and external, maybe. But that also seems difficult because I, I just don't know whether this storage object gets enough information about, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get any information, I don't think about who is doing the action. Um, I suppose we could just ignore non-user table IDs, but that also seems brittle because what if we add new internal tables that have IDs greater than the, you know, set of system tables that exist now or whatever. Uh, whoops, get check out these gauge. Out of curiosity, I just want to run this test to see if it works at all. A ray tracing link. Oh yeah, this is a, such a good example of what you can do with the pop ray. <laughs> exactly as I said, it's a uh, platonic solids in a void. Very exciting stuff. Okay, so expected one outstanding lease found two. That is interesting. I wonder, is that gonna stay exactly the same or is this already flaky? It's always two, huh? Oh, is it because there's a lease on the database? So if I said, hold on, let's let's um make one other table then.
Um, Oh wait, I didn't actually write the assertion. That was dumb. Okay, <laughs> I was not really paying attention there. Okay, so I'm doing my first query. I ask for the gauge's value. It should be equal to two plus outstanding leases. We check that here after query minus outstanding leases. Then we run another thing. We assert no error. We get after the query, we subtract again, and now this should be three. Okay, let's try this one more time. transformed boxes. Okay, wait, it still failed. Expended, expected one outstanding lease found two. Uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't, um, I forgot that we uh, are force pushing. Need to reset. Marble sphere in rubber torus. Yes. Look at these beautiful textures. They're so realistic looking, aren't they? Leaked stopper. What the heck? Did we just like crash everything or something? What does this mean? This seems truly terrible. Leaked. Uh, I guess I need to like Do I need to like turn off the server or something? Defer stopper dot stop. I probably didn't do that. It's the issue. Okay. <clears throat> All these little details, you know, you forget them when you don't when you don't work in them for a little while. Okay, get fetch mine. Reset. Try again. Ooh, this is looking pretty slick though. Look at that crystal ball. You got those mirrors. Our test is passing. Very exciting stuff. Okay, so I guess the next question is like, I don't necessarily want to merge this as is because it will be flaky. So how can I, can I like tell this test cluster not to do anything in the background or something like that? Or is that not really possible? Presumably it's not easy. Um, I guess the other option would be, well, I do think that it's valuable to have this lease metric contain the internal executors leases because those leases count against the maximum number of leases per node. There's this cache, which is like super tiny, by the way. I really think we should up the size of that cache, right? Isn't it like 50 or something like that? Um, so where is that cache anyway?
Is it this default lease refresh limit? It doesn't. Okay, so construct a list of descriptors needing their leases to be reacquired. So we loop through this m.mu.descriptors thing. We quit once we see too many. And if we do see too many, then they don't get these happening. So what we're actually doing is we're saying that we're We're adding, okay, we're making this new set, IDs. The IDs are the ones that we're going to be refreshing. Um, and if what we do with these things that we refresh is that we acquire node lease on the ID, I guess what I don't exactly see here is, um, oh my gosh, and we do them all in their own separate Go routine? <laughs> I guess that's not necessarily crazy. I guess what I don't understand is that like, we've got this big lock here and it's this set that's getting changed, right? These descriptors this map. And what I don't understand is like, do we end up clearing this thing or something like that? Or is it just that the leases are out of date and they sit in the cache, but they're out of date so they can't get used. Well, there's also this remove inactive versions thing. Oh, that's different. That's about if nobody's touching them. I don't know how this works. I don't know how this works. I mean, what I find interesting is that this, this number, this refresh limit, it's actually like, I mean, it's designed to prevent the too much concurrency. It seems like, right? The least refresh limit is it's really saying like, just do this number, but do them all at once. It almost feels like what, what we could be doing maybe instead would be like, having a much higher number, but like having a better duty cycle. So like over the span of whatever this refresh timer is, we do them one by one during that time. So there's continuous activity, but like less of it. It's like less bursty that way, you know? Isn't it like super, super bursty, the duty cycle? No, it's with a D-U-T-Y. How many, you gotta know about the duty cycles, right? That's like a classic thing to know about. So immature peak 9117. This is a mature stream. We don't make such jokes. <laughs> so jittered lease duration is set to, I see the mean duration of lease will be acquired for, which is set to what? Default descriptor lease duration, which is five minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like it would be kind of cool to see these things spread across those five minutes. And maybe that way we could up that number. Should I make an issue about this? Or do we already have so many issues that it would be just too much to handle? I don't know. I do think that this is a real problem that comes up, right? I mean, I know we've had problems with this. Um, let's see if there's an issue for it already. How about? 
um, lease limit. What is it called? The refresh limit. Seems to be a different kind of refreshing, right? Why is this called table cache, by the way? Do we use that word anywhere else? Doesn't really seem like it. I don't really get this. I, I, I still think that there's something I'm missing because like it, it doesn't seem like we remove the other leases. It's just like that they get expired and then we're, they're sitting in the cache. Yeah, so it's really just like cons consider increasing the number of the default maximum number of leases to to refresh the setting defaults to 50 this means that if there are more than 50 active leases on a node this is node scope right i think it is yeah in a node um some of them will the some of them will fall out of the cache before, not really fall out of the cache, expire before getting automatically refreshed, leading to latency in the query path when a query needs to touch one of the tables above 50 in a sense <laughs> that isn't in that set of 50 period um i think the reason that we have this 50 limit is to prevent too much concurrency when we refresh these leases since we refresh each of them in a go routine is that so is that really so like what if we okay what about this as a as a plan what if we were to like oh but does this already make it so that you don't have too much concurrency using the given channel as a semaphore to limit the number of tasks that are run concurrently i mean that sounds great and the semaphore is set to how big it's a quota pool, the least concurrency limit. Oh, okay, the least concurrency limit is actually five. So I don't really see why we have this limit at all. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we already limit the concurrency of the least refresher to five, which means that the limit of 50 might really just be an artificial artificial one question mark i don't quite see hey dominic what's up i don't quite see what this limit is accomplishing it doesn't limit the size of the lease map either just the number of leases that get for 
refreshing through that, yeah, period. Um, I would say that we'd rather see a limit that avoids too many leases to refresh within the lease refresh time window. But that seems hard to accomplish. Maybe we just up it 10x to 500. <laughs> um, I'll call this a enhancement. Um, I know we had some recent issues related to this, but I don't know where they live. Okay. I do think that this would be a really low cost improvement and I, I don't immediately see the downside of, of, of increasing this limit even by a lot. So hopefully that'll be a useful conversation starter, but I don't know. Okay, anyway, back to our test. Back to our test. Um, Back to our test, I don't quite know how to deflake this, honestly. Uh, how about, hmm, let's say test outstanding leases metric tests the gauge that keeps track of the number of outstanding SQL leases on a node. And B, if this flakes, it's probably because there are internal processes requiring leases on things. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know what to say. I basically just want to say, like, maybe just delete this test if it starts to flake, but I don't know. I don't think it's worth like making this test super robust. So if it's flaky, like maybe we just ought to not care about testing this thing at all. Um, if it starts to get flaky, it's probably easier to just delete it than deflake it. <laughs> How about that? I don't know. I don't know. You know, just about like in the in the name of like not wasting too much time on stuff that's maybe not that useful. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, let's um commit this again. Uh, let's get rid of this little commit like this, fix up, uh, we'll push, um, we'll retest and then hopefully, hopefully we can merge this and be done with this, uh, little saga here. Not that it's been going on for too long, but I would like to have this gauge. I think it would be useful. Cool. <laughs> That's cool, regex generator. I'm glad you're enjoying following along. Um, what kind of stuff do you do with Go on your job? Okay, so let's go back to our giant list of PRs that we haven't finished. Flat decimal columns, don't think we can really do that right now. This one, could maybe look at this one. The open TX ends gauge is definitely something I wanna finish. Let's do that today. We're gonna to keep doing some gauge stuff, how about? So this is called the active TX ends or something like that, right? Check out active TX ends. Right now, DevOps are playing a role in cross-domain identity management. Salesforce, MuleSoft, Cassandra. It's only been a month. What is MuleSoft again? I've heard of that, but I don't really know what it is, honestly.
Mule Soft. It's a very evocative name, so I, I kind of like it. Docs issue for telling users to raise it. I don't know why we don't raise it by default. I mean, if you don't know and I don't know, maybe we ought to just do it. Oh, to increase it to 500. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Do worry that 50 is suffering from Jordan Lewis's law. Once a constant is committed to code, it's hard to change. Like consider upping the actual default to 500. <laughs> Essentially, an API abstraction provides a single API contract for devs to build things against, regardless of backend services, languages, or queries. Wow, that sounds pretty magic, Regex. That sounds like it's like an anything machine. It's like, this software does literally anything, and it unifies it across all other classes of anything. <laughs> What's up, FTC? How's it going? Nice to see you. OK, so here we have a little bit of some fun merge conflicts to deal with. I'm a little bit confused. I thought I, I thought I, um, dealt with some of this stuff. Um, hold on a sec. So git log active TXNs. I wonder if we've made a similar change in another PR. Sometimes that happens. So I think you can do this, right? Can't you log a particular file? Um, yeah, I think, I don't, I don't see why we would have merge conflicts here, honestly. It seems sort of random. Oh, 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 this is the conflict. I see, oh, okay, so that's fine. We can, we can fix this up. Um, so let's resolve conflicts again. Hopefully this will go better than the last time we tried to do that on the stream. I got really confused and like gave up. Um, resolve conflicts. So try this merge thing out. Okay, so this is kind of a neat view, right? Basically what this is telling you is that the left side is what I've done and the right side is what they've done. So let's accept this change on their side. My side is changing SQL connections to open SQL sessions. And the reason we're doing this is so it mimics, it sort of is like more consistent UX because it's gonna match the stuff on the left, which is the sessions page. It's not called the connections page, it's called the sessions page. So this is gonna be total number of open SQL sessions, great. And they changed some stuff on the right side, so how this map works. I don't think we changed that at all. So we can just ignore our side here and just accept their changes. Okay, so now it looks like we've got some stuff to do. It looks like we add some new graphs, open SQL transactions and active SQL statements. I don't think they changed that at all. Oh yeah, can't we do apply non-conflicting changes all? Yeah. So wait, where are the, are there any other changes or doesn't seem like it. Oh wait, one conflict left unprocessed. Continue merge. Where is that conflict that's left unprocessed? Is it up here? Ah, I see. So what we did is we changed something to say active flows for distributed SQL statements and they changed a bunch of stuff but they left it as queries. So I'm gonna accept their changes first, I think. up their changes and we're going to change this to say statements instead of queries. Um, this 
statements. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, I think what's really... Oh, wait. Basically, like, there's there was just a bit of a confusion here, which was that... We had some metrics that sounded like they were talking about something very specific, distributed SQL queries instead of like all SQL queries or something like that. And I think what the difference here is now that we removed some of that language to be less confusing, but the metric name is the same. I don't know. It's a bit of a mess. What's going on here? We have cr.node.sql.queries.active. Is that the same as what we have up here? It is. So we can just delete that altogether, I guess like so. And then we can keep this one. This one should be called statements. And this is something a little bit different. It's sort of random. Like, I don't think users care about this. Active flows for distributed SQL statements. It's basically like the number of active components of all statements across all queries or something, or across, across all nodes, rather. But anyway, OK, I think, I think this is basically what we want here. Okay, apply. One conflict less on process, no. Okay, I just have to X this and then we should be good. Apply. <laughs> Graphical conflict resolution tool must be having a good time. We're having a good time. We're just like kind of cleaning up a bunch of old projects that we never finished, which is a classic thing that happens to many people. But I feel like this stream, I think that's like one major downside of this stream in my personal coding life, which is that I end up doing way too many projects that I don't finish. It's making me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> so I'm trying to fix that up a little bit. Go back through some old stuff here. Okay. Um, so let's actually, why don't we just look at what we, uh, what we did here to make sure it still makes sense. And these should all say statements, technically. Uh, that's like a bigger change. Replace queries with statements. Just for consistency's sake, you know? A lot of my personal projects are just devices for learning new stuff. Once I've learned the stuff, lose interest in finishing the implementation. Yeah, that's a fair thing. I think this is fine. I think this is good. I think this is good and fine. Um, let's go back over here and see what the deal is with the PR. Looks like I have LGTMs on this too, so I could have just been merging it. But now that I've got the conflicts resolved, I should probably just like spot check to see if it looks good. <clears throat> let's do that. Actually, let's do that on the remote machine. Oh wait, I should have been using my yay sound effect a lot more. I just did all these successful things and I didn't even give anybody a yay. Okay, 
How about when I see the graph? I mean, I need to like Pavlovian condition myself to like, yeah, do, succeed at more projects. So maybe when maybe when I bore something, I can give us a yay sound effect. <laughs> this is why I usually only start projects for things that I will actually use. Yeah, it's a I'd say it's a fair, like the dog fooding method of personal project. What's up, Haritalk? A BGP Damon? Yes, I I want I badly want. Oh yeah, well I I forgot that you guys told me about that like giant internet network experiment that you can sign up for, where it's like a sub internet that anybody can join or whatever. That sounds fine. I just basically think that you guys should make your own one for the, the new era of um, tail scale. It just seems like tail scale and DN42 could be like, yeah, there could be like DN43 on top of tail scale or something. Get a lot of hype from the internet. Could be pretty fun, I think. The gopher net. <laughs> IPv5. <laughs> okay, Yohora says that I should actually be reviving this random old PR. Oh boy. Yay, this thing merged. Okay, I think that we get to have a yay for this one. We did something on stream and it actually merged. That gives us a... <laughs> Great. <laughs> Was it too loud? Oh, was it a little bit too loud? Okay, I'll make sure to uh, tone down the uh, the volume on that one, you guys. <laughs> I, I'm glad to get this this uh, real time feedback for for you from you. So here's my soundboard. As you can see, it only has one sound effect: the children yay. Okay, we got a fifty percent volume. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to uh, make anybody jump out of their seats. Okay, um, well, while this builds, let's see what else we have to resurrect here. Um, well, we've got our disable interleave tables by default PR. Why is this failing out of curiosity? I wouldn't expect it to be failing. Ah, so I guess we needed to add the, we have some tests that, ugh, it's so annoying. They show all of the, the cluster settings, so you have to like look at them. It's pretty lame. Okay, well, that's easy enough to fix. Um, so what what's this PR about, you guys? I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> there's this feature, Interleave Tables. Maybe you've heard of it. I think I did a bunch of talking about interleave tables on the stream in the distant past. We decided that we're going to delete the feature. I don't remember if I told you guys this or not, but the thing is with interleave tables is that um, they don't actually do what you expect. And I think that it's become one of these features that it makes you feel really good to use, but for the database's sake, you really shouldn't be using it at all. Uh, Cause it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really work that well. Um, so we're gonna remove it. I think it's it's been a little bit of a challenge to do that because it's one of those features where it's like, man, people just love to use this thing. Um, and telling them that they don't, they shouldn't, it sort of, it can be like a blow, you know, a blow to the head. And I, so it's been, a, we, it's been a bit of a negotiation working with people, showing them that it's not in fact doing what they think it's doing. Um, Lol Cool Cat. What's up, lol, cool cat? Trying to connect to my CockroachDB cloud instance from within a peered VPC on Google Cloud. Any resources that could help you do that? Hmm, this is a good question. I don't know if 
I personally, hmm, don't we have documentation on this? Don't we? Don't we? I've, I've heard of VPC peering, but I don't like know too much about it. Um, I'm gonna, you know what? Okay, did you hear the sound of that screenshot? That was the sound of the getting somebody else to help you screenshot. Uh, well, cool cat. So thanks for asking. I'm gonna see if somebody else can uh, tell me, help me help you in a sense. <laughs> There's a guide on how to create the VPC, but looking for more of a Kubernetes guide. Um, interesting. You're a noob to GKE. I'm unfortunately also a noob to GKE. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about this stuff. <laughs> um, I really should learn about it, huh? I feel like a cool project that I could do on stream that would be a little bit different from what this normal stuff has been. What if I should make, make an application on top of Cockroach Cloud? Wouldn't that be a cool thing? I've definitely wanted to do that for a little while. Um, I feel like it might be more, more of a dev rally kind of project. Um, I'm hearing yes from Lol Cool Cat. Um, yeah, I think I, I need to like come up with what, what I could do for that, but that could be a really cool project. I need to come up with like a good good random personal project that could use Cockroach Cloud and do that on stream. And I think that could be really fun. Got to come up with some ideas first. You open the docs for on how to get up and running and lost interest. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That is quite a lot of support for this idea, isn't it? Um, okay, well, anyway, so about interleave tables real quick. We're getting rid of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> dude, the captain to the rescue. The captain is to the rescue. <laughs> Portuguese captain is absolutely the man, I will say. Portuguese captain also has a good video gaming stream from time to time, so you should, uh, you know, give him a follow, <laughs> but, but anyway, okay. So interleave tables, we're, we're deleting them. This is a PR that sort of kicks off that process. It's adding a cluster setting that is off by default. So if it's off, you can't make any new interleave tables. And if it's on, you can, and you can set it to on. So it's just sort of like a hint, like, Hey guys, this thing is going to go away. That's what this PR is about. Um, so let's go ahead and fix this thing. Um, okay, so cluster.secret, right? So I guess we're just adding a new thing to this. I don't know why. Eh, whatever, we'll just add it, it's okay. I guess I could use the rewrite setting for this, right? So I can say make test base logic files equal system, test flags equals rewrite. And that should set it up correctly. Guys, I'm gonna be right back. Um, give me a hot second and I will be back.
Hey guys, I'm back. I'm back. Um, so looks like we're just sitting around compiling stuff. So that's exciting. But we've got to do this at some point, don't we? Or should we just do it on the remote computer again? <laughs> Always a challenge if you change a branch in the middle of a stream, you get this problem. Um, we'll just do it by hand. Okay, so we're just gonna add this new guy over here. See, the real fear is that like, we, um, Let's just, uh, okay, 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 okay. This thing is still going, good Lord. Everything's falling apart. None of my builds are building. Um, what I really need to do, okay. <laughs> uh, what I really need to do is like, Get back over here. We can run our test over here. Make test base logic files equals system test flags equals rewrite. I think this should be pretty quick, right? Dude, I love this live debugging going on in the chat. <laughs> Why is Kubernetes so hard, guys? Can you answer me that? No, 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 please do not. Please, please, no, I was, I was completely sincere. I truly love the live debugging in the chat. In a, in a sincere and honest level of love. But actually, now that, now that we're talking about this, do you know about our community Slack? Our community Slack is a really good way to get help for generic CockroachDB stuff, and you might have some luck there if you haven't joined it yet. Um, you can join it by going to this link. Made a thread on the forum, but no responses yet. I see. I'm sure we can do something about that. Okay, get diff. Okay, so here is these differences, right? Um, so we'll just, uh, this is like the most jank thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I need to figure out a way to do better here. <laughs> You guys, I need to figure out a way to do better. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for our event log file. <clears throat> so event log, event underscore log it's called. Okay, so over here we've just we're gonna add this line. I guess this is just about I see, since we're setting a new cluster setting, we've got a oh what fun. Truly so fun, isn't it? Um truly, truly fun. What's up, crypto sci? It's it's going pretty good. We're doing sort of like a we're doing like cleanup stream. We're doing like we're like going back and fixing a bunch of old PRs that we've been just we've left sitting around for far too long and we're sort of embarrassed about it. <laughs> um, so, yep. Okay, so that's working all right. Um, and this is on where line four sixty nine or so. Four sixty nine. Finally, a stream you might be able to understand. Um, yeah, I hope so. Automatic collection. Okay, so after this, stick this over here. Okay. Okay, so add these two files. 
push this up. And then hopefully this PR over here will become ready to merge soon enough. Got that push. Um, so we've got a couple of irons in the fire. It's pretty good. We've got like three concurrent PRs that I think we could theoretically all merge because they've all already gotten LGTFs that I've just been too, too lazy to, uh, to merge them. So that's good. Good stuff. Okay, let's go back over here and actually see if we can finish making the um, UI here because I do want to check those charts. Um, what was that called? It was called active TXN or something. Get last. Yes. Get checkout active TXNs. Get status. Okay, let's try this again. I don't know, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck when it's generating those, like the JavaScript or whatever it's doing, like that giant pipeline of JavaScript and Babel or whatever the heck it's doing. It, it gets like a little bit stuck sometimes. You gotta restart it. It's pretty frustrating if I had to be honest. Webpack, really wanna, really wish we could get rid of this, but I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> It's just like we've baked too much specific stuff into this and I feel like chain getting off of it would be like tantamount to rewriting the whole thing maybe. I don't know. I hear ES, ES build is the hotness, but I think it would be really hard to switch. Oh yeah, you like that the new keyboard angle? Uh, yeah, you'd be surprised about how that works. It's like, I basically have like a, a camera that points down and captures like my whole, it's just like a regular webcam, but then I've cropped it down. Like, <laughs> it's like you can see my entire torso, but I've just like cropped it to include only the little. No, it's it's sort of like, it's just like on the top of the monitor. You know what I mean? <laughs> just you would never know based on the creative cropping. <laughs> I don't know like why it gets stuck here. Like, is it getting stuck or is it? Or is it uh, just taking forever? I don't. I don't really know. <laughs> I've got a new fan in Hydron Campy, I guess. Um. Mhm. Mm right. Okay. So, all right. What should we do next? I had a vague idea. Um. I had a vague idea. We've done, you know, I think we've done like a little bit of a cleanup. We've done like three in, three, one out or something kind of thing. Uh, hey, thanks for the follow. So one thing I was thinking of maybe wanting to spend time on was, where is it at? Where is it at? It's none of these tabs. <laughs> Um, let's see if I can find this tab. It's basically some of this stuff here. Um, idea with this is that we've got all of this snazzy, let's, let's see if we can do a little bit of a demo here. Um, Maybe close some of those browser tabs. Okay, fine, hair talk. I'll close some of them. And close this one. I wanna keep this one open. Keep this one open. Uh, close this one. Close this one. 
close this one. Close this one. Close this one. I don't know how you guys do this, man. It's like so hard to close tabs. I just like want to leave them open forever. Get rid of this stuff. Get rid of this. I've been enjoying these Pavre images, but maybe it's time to close them out too. Did you, oh man, did you guys hear this really big tragedy though about the Great Suspender? I used to use the Great Suspender, which is this great little tab thing that like suspended tabs when you weren't using them, but then it like basically got compromised. <laughs> The Great Suspender. It like it's now like owned by some suspicious entity that like might be stealing all of your data or something like that. So like I had to delete it because I I was too scared. Ditch the Great Suspender before it becomes a security risk. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, bummer. Okay, so uh, let's check out our demo here. Tab FS. <laughs> um, no. Tab FS is a, oh yeah, I did see this. It mounts your browser tabs as a file system on your computer. <laughs> I mean, this is cool, but like I sort of struggle to, like, I guess it's powerful, but then you have to like think of stuff to do, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like then you have to be a programmer about your own browser tabs, which is like good, I guess. I feel like this is a classic hacker news thing, right? Like build this like insane thing that like, it's like good infrastructure, but then like any of the actual use cases are sort of like left as an exercise to the reader. <laughs> it's like all of this stuff seems to be like the useful part, but I don't know. Dominic is going all in on tab FS now. Okay. So, right. The idea with this issue, let's see, select. Didn't we make a join earlier? Let's try this join again. So I run some join, go over here to my statements page. I filter to, this is kind of weird. I guess it's showing all these statements because demo like does a bunch of stuff when it starts up. Um, Where's my select? Does my select not exist? Oh, here it is. Okay, it just did, did, it hadn't shown up yet. So I think the idea with this guy is that we wanna be adding, I think we spent a bunch of time on the stream doing similar stuff to this a, a while ago. We added some of these new statistics and everything. And I think we just wanna sort of resurface them in a better way. Um, specifically, like some of the stuff that only used to exist when you collected diagnostics on it, right? We're going to be adding that to the sort of everyday set of things that we collect all the time. So I think if I clicked ac activate diagnostics and then I ran this again, then over here, it eventually will notice that that was run again. And then I can look at what happened theoretically. Oh, wait, or do I have to download it? I can't remember how this works, I guess. I guess it looks like I have to download it. So the idea is that we'll be able to actually just remove a bunch of that effort and like surface the main statistics in a sampled fashion to this page. Um, and I think like theoretically, a lot of this stuff is already available. It's just a matter of plumbing it into the UI. So I was thinking maybe that if I could get some of this cleanup done, I would plumb some of that up next, just as, you know, something to do. I think it's important too. Um, grab FS, the plan nine dream, everything is a file. Wait, is that plan nine or is that Unix? I'm confused. Pfft. 
Okay, so this thing actually finished eventually. It just took like 10 million years. I don't know why it took so long, but let's, uh, okay. I wanna run this. Start single node. I wanna run this. I wanna remove my demo. I just wanted to test that those TXN metrics that we were looking at earlier. So I think I had like a SSH tunnel for this, right? Okay. 90, 90. I think I, don't I want 80, 80 though? Unix is everything is a file and plan nine is Unix actually done right? Where windows in your window manager are files and panes in your editor are files. This is the year of plan nine on the desktop. That's pretty funny. Okay, so here is my cluster that's living on that remote node. And I wanted to look at the metrics page. And I wanted to look at the SQL dashboard. And I wanted to look at open SQL sessions, open SQL transactions, and active SQL statements. It's kind of gross, like UX wise, right? To have like open, open, active. Like you could have maybe active, 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 active SQL sessions, active SQL transactions, and active SQL statements. Maybe that's better. Well, but then it's confusing, right? Because people are gonna be like, well, is this, the session is open, but is it active? That's like a little bit confusing. I feel like open is more accurate. Active, active, active. What's up, JV Pratt? Um, let's, uh, let's just do a quick little smoke test of this thing too. So. Okay, so theoretically I should now get one open SQL statement, right? Call sessions connected, and then you have three different things. <laughs> the ultimate solution is a tree that has O and one. So you have all of the bits and you can make anything out of them. Yay, okay, our SQL sessions went to one, so that's cool. Um, and let's go ahead and open a transaction. You need emotes with your own face at some point? Yeah, it's important for some one, maybe. <laughs> what is whelmed? So here we now have an open SQL transaction. And then hopefully if we run a statement here, you'll see a spike. Well, it actually might not be, the sampling might be too little. So we kind of need to do like a PG sleep of a few seconds to make sure that it um, works properly. So we've got one session, one transaction, and hopefully this will go up to one and then go back down for a bit. Your face is a corpse. I, <laughs> nice. I need to, that's a pretty good emote. Is that a new one? I feel like I hadn't, I feel like I didn't see that one before. Great, so our statements jumps up to one and then it goes back to zero. And then hopefully if we can close this, why don't we just terminate the connection? Hopefully we'll see these things go back to zero as well. Whelmed is an emote on the gopher slack. <laughs> I see. I think that's you. <laughs> um, mm, yes. Okay, cool. So that's all good. I feel like this is, I mean, I think we had sort of tested this out earlier and it was just a matter of fixing it up. I think this is gonna be huge, man. This is gonna be so big. I'm excited to ship this. Um, Right, so that's why we wanted to rebuild this stuff. This thing's going, this thing's going. Yeah, I think we should just go ahead and probably dive into this bit of work, maybe. Bigly. Um, Intern for the CERN sat next to me during a Chem 101 exam. <laughs> I 
Nice. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, okay. So I guess the first step for this would probably be, um, can we figure out whether this stuff is actually captured or not yet? Like, I don't even remember where we're at with this. I think this is kind of more of a learning thing for me than anything, because I think we did add a bunch of new stuff here and I don't remember where it lives really. Um, maybe there's something called like a statement sampler or something. Statement sampler. Oh, that's something else though. Hmm. How can we how can we find this? I guess we could look at Git log and maybe search around for. You're not a stalker, it's okay. I just don't want to enable any other stalkers, CryptoSci. That's you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't want to get weird. It's like it's like getting a little weird, maybe. <laughs> um Okay, so what if we just search for like max memory usage? Random coincidence? Yeah, I can believe that. Oh yeah, the trace analyzer. Oh yeah, this thing is important. I need to learn about how this thing works for sure. Ooh, node level stats. This is all seeming very relevant to my life. I need to look at it and understand it. Flow metadata contains metadata extracted from flows. This information is stored in flow info and analyzed by trace analyzer. Um, maps a processor ID to stats, maps a stream ID to stats, maps a flow ID to flow stats. So then where do we like get these things out? Planner.curplan.dist equal flow infos. If you're collecting query diagnostics, this stuff is saved here instrumentation. Get query level stats, query level stats. But then we sort of throw this away, don't we? Why is this called error and not error? It seems sort of random. I'm gonna fix that as while we're here. Um, okay, so get query, do we call this in more than one spot, do we think? Looks like we don't. So I guess the idea is that theoretically we would wanna be Plumbing more stuff up here. Instrumentation helper. Encapsulates the logic around extracting information about the execution of a statement, like bundles and traces, typical usage, set output mode, setup, set discard rows. I kind of forget like to what extent we've started to capture this information and to what extent we have it. Um, Cause if it's like starting from nowhere, I don't know if that's, I, I, for some reason I thought like we had some of this pipeline set up and I was going to be adding a little bit more to the pipeline. If we don't have a pipeline like this set up at all, I think it's not, not necessarily so good. I thought there was something, it's like something called app stats or something, right? Um, yeah, okay, it should be, okay, okay, okay. There's something called like get statement details, right? That's where we export all this information. Is it the case that we get statement bundle is not quite right. Get 
statement is not quite right either. What is the name of this thing again? There's something called status server maybe that does this stuff. I always need to rediscover how this stuff works every time, honestly. Status server? Um, server PB? Status.proto, right? List sessions. What about the old list statements, right? Where the heck is that thing? It's not anywhere. Is it just called statements request and statements response? Tendency to remember everyone you mean to come across, see someone. I don't think that that's not, I don't know. I feel like that's fine. As long as you're just sort of like a little bit okay if they don't remember who you are, you know? Like you don't want, if you come in too strong, they're gonna be like weird. But I, I think it's nice to remember people, right? Like I think that's how society is formed, right? Like people being nice to each other. So I think you're doing good, Crypto side. Keep it up. I'm a little confused though, right? Cause this stuff is not, this stuff is really gonna be about um, a sample collection, isn't it? It's not going to be about statistics. And I'm just wondering whether we have something like that set up or not. I just don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so if I look at this, the TypeScript page for this, what is it actually doing? No, but I think people do actually will remember you. That's the thing. Like, I think I think that if you suppress your instinct to say hello, you might be surprised by the fact that people will probably remember you, right? Like, if you remember people, people will remember you. Mostly. Maybe. Um... Truth is, yeah, I just don't. <laughs> I'm under equipped for this project, I'm realizing. Deeply under equipped. I need to know whether we wanted to add stuff to this proto or do it in a different way. I just don't know. I feel like this is actually different. This is about, this is really about the, um, This is really about the, um, this thing, diagnostics. Um, I think we don't, I don't think we really have a mechanism to push this stuff up just yet. So I mean, maybe what it's about is like, you could theoretically think of it as like, Yeah, we have this sample rate, I thought, right? Don't we have some, some sort of new sample rate for this? If we look at the sample rate, then maybe we should be able to see where the sampling is actually done. 
Um, how can I find that? Stats, sampler, I don't know. Guys, I'm lost, I'm lost. Okay, maybe if we go back to this trace analyzer, we'll find some ideas. Okay, get query level stats, returns all the top level stats in a query level stats struct, right? And what's interesting is that this is actually not a statistic in the sense that we were thinking of. This is actually like a sample. This is like literally, this is what a particular query did, I think. So I do think that Theoretically, we ought to be able to say we ought to be able to basically like save this sample somewhere and then get it back when people are getting data such as the current value of these actual statistics, right? Like, okay, so like taking this one as an example um maybe this is a bad example taking this one as an example where do we actually pull this stuff out oh do we not have to do it in go because once it's in this this is actually a protobuf struct and then we can we like get it in the typescript right Statements, that, okay, wait, wait, sorry. This is like, I'm like really reinventing the wheel, wheel here. Statement, statistics, package SQL UI, package UI rather. <clears throat> so appsats.ts. Right, 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 right. This is where we've got I think maybe theoretically the idea would be that we would add a new field to status.proto inside of statement statistics that's like essentially like last analysis or something like that. Or like last sampled analysis and then sticks up in there maybe. But we, we already have some of that, right? We've got this sensitive info business, last error, most recent plan description, most recent plan timestamp. So, is the idea that we would just append to that. I'm a little bit confused. Like I really thought that we had a plan around this already. I, mean, I bet we do and it's just like, I don't know what it is or know where to find it. <laughs> Ugh. Um, Okay, so what if what if theoretically we just said, we've got these query level stats. This is like the new data that we're not sending up to the, the UI, right? Network bytes sent, maximum usage, KV bytes read, KV rows read, KV time, network messages. I mean, interestingly, like this stuff could also be average, right? Like you could you could add this to the same sorts of averages that we're already sending to the UI and just like call it a day, right? Um, like, like these ones are all averages in a sense, byte sent over network. And interestingly, we're not, 
I mean, we're not um, adding these to the averages, right? I feel like that would be a pretty easy change for me to make right now. That wouldn't take so much angst. <laughs> uh, so maybe I could just do that. And we could put it for discussion at the very least. I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm gonna do that. You guys, we have a plan. We have a plan. Okay, let's uh let's open up this. What we really want to do is just kind of copy all of these into the proto, the ones that are missing. Um, okay, so byte sent over network we have here. Max memory usage. This would be the average max memory usage, I guess, right? basically just repeat this we're adding kv bytes red kv rows red kv time um looks like we have a bunch of other sort of times here that are not annotated with the quantity, so I'm guessing they're nanoseconds. <clears throat> and then network messages. Oh wait, we already have some of this stuff. Bytes red and rose red is like the same quantity. Why do we collect them in two different ways? What's up, Gyro? Oh, <laughs> letting you discover Dennis. Uh, I'm glad that you uh, found value from that. <laughs> He's an interesting fellow. I'm guessing we don't need these two then because we've already got bytes red and rose red. He helped you install FreeBSD with root on ZFS Monday or Tuesday while he was drunk. Really good time. Wow. That sounds like a quintessential last miles kind of experience.
Impressed by the cocker oh the new UI overall design. Yeah, I think we've we've gotten some really good designers. I, I like it as well. How does this network messages thing work exactly? Okay, well anyway, so we've added some new stats here. I feel like this is, is a little bit like not the intention of this change, but because I'm fairly sure that I, what I need to be doing is thinking about how to sample things as well instead of just packing them into these big average buckets, but <coughs> maybe this is fine. I don't know, I need to check. I need to talk with some people about this. In the meantime, let's check on our PRs. Are they, um, they pass the eye yet? This one's still going. This one failed, sad. Uh, why would this have changed? This seems extremely suspicious. Okay, let's make a diff of this. I wonder if this is just sort of an unrelated flake. I feel like it might be, but I'm not sure. Um. I do expected oh get rid of this oh crap Oh, something with interesting. I wonder if this thing needs to have something about column family randomization fixed. Um, test exec build. Unique. What is unique? Experimental unique without index constraints. Oh, I see. I think this just needs explicit column families. Um, let me make an issue. So we'll say uh, SQL flaky exec builder test for new unique indexes. See build here. I, the diff is this. I think the issue is that the column family randomization is enabled here, so we need to ex specify explicit column families in the tests. I think 
This is for Rebecca. I think she wrote this test really recently. So just trying to help out. Okay, so ignoring that one, I um, thought I saw another failing test here too, which was in test chart catalog gen and test chart catalog metrics. Um, so let's fix that <clears throat> while we're here. So let's stash these changes and go back to our branch for this, which was what it was called. Active TXNs. And the issue was what? Um, need to specify an access label in its chart description. What the heck? Okay. Um, test chart catalog gen. Okay, so what does this do? Generate catalog. I think this is just a, basically about that giant chart catalog thing that I was looking at. Um, I probably didn't update it quite right. But I don't, to, to be honest, I don't know how to update this thing properly. Um, open transactions, open transactions. The problem is that it has metrics with different access labels. You need to specify an access label in its chart description. What? Oh, do I just not? I just need to have a, a value for this, I guess. Um, or is, is there like, should I call it like count or something? See, so yeah, how come, you, I don't understand why like some of the time you, you don't have to have an access label and sometimes you do. Oh, is it because like I've specified it somewhere else or something? SQL.txns.open. The unit is count. So I should be able to find a corresponding one for SQL.failure.count. I guess I just need to like, I don't see, I, I, if the test can catch this, why doesn't it just do it in a sense? Okay, that's fine. Um, so SQL.failure.count, SQL.failure.count. Wait, but this doesn't have an axis. Uh, I don't get it. Um, so inside of generate catalog, we get something that is broken, I guess, create individual charts, add chart and subsections. Like where's the actual error coming from? Chart blah has metrics with different axis labels. What does this even mean? <clears throat> oh, it takes two axis labels. I guess I could print it out. How about that? That way maybe I could, it'll be more obvious what's actually going on here. So al comma m dot axis label. Okay, um, so let's try that then. What's, this test is called What was it called again? Test chart catalog gen. <clears throat> oh, of course, this is going to take forever to regenerate. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's fine. Let's, oh my God. I'm in a terrible hell, you guys. I'm truly in a terrible hell. Um, uh, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna push this to my remote server so we could be able to test it more easily. Get fetch mine, get rebase, make <clears throat> okay, maybe, hopefully this will tell me actually what I'm doing wrong this time around. But we'll see. Okay, in the meantime, let's like clean up our um, working directory here, it's it's like died. Okay, uh, git checkout, can I like just wipe, oh yeah, I know I can do git checkout, seek 192, uh oh. Okay, that succeeded? Um, okay, so I guess the idea was just, okay, whatever. Seems really weird, but I guess that's fine. To make sure that this other one works too. Okay, great then. All is well. Um, so let's just squash these two commits here. What's up, Eolas? How's it going? Okay, so hopefully that will fix this t failing test. Um, how are these other ones doing? This one's still going. This one we've decided to abandon. And what about our, what about our um, lease gauge? How come this one's not working? This guy failed for some unknown reason. Test outstanding lease <laughs> metric itself has failed. Uh, okay, great. Why? <clears throat> this is like not really telling me what happened. It's pretty frustrating. When you have an output channel in a function that is called with go, do you have to use it in a for loop to read data from it? Or does data come from it without a for loop? Um, you don't have to use a for loop to read data from it, no. Um, a for loop just makes it like easier. It'll let you consume the whole thing at once. But you can just do it one at a time if you want, like with the you know left arrow notation. I don't exactly know why this. Oh, expected three outstanding leases found four. Okay, so I guess this is just like fundamentally flaky without even, it's too bad. I don't know how to make this unflaky. It's so frustrating. Um, you weren't sure if it was just going to run once without a for loop? Oh yeah, it will just run once without a for loop, right? It'll just pull something from the channel one time. I'm not sure if I understand your question completely. Um, okay, wait, so line 
2412 in least test. Wrong least test. Expect in expected three outstanding leases found. That's a bummer. Trying to read from an input channel and run code for each time data is sent through it. Yeah, I think one normally would do this with a for loop for sure. I think you're right. Yeah, I think that, that should be fine. I didn't like it. Um, I mean, you might want to like, you need to capture the, I don't know what you mean by it didn't like that. I think that should work, right? Doesn't that work? Go playground. Non-Boolean value or something? Oh, do you need to like, yeah, Dominic probably will have a better, better suggestion for you than what I'm about to do, which is like play around and probably not remember how stuff works in the first place. There's gotta be an example of exactly your case here, right? Oh, you didn't use the range keyword. Is that the problem? Yeah. <laughs> If you didn't use this range keyword, it's definitely not gonna work. <clears throat> I think it would block until you close the channel, right? Isn't that how that works? I guess I could just like, uh, maybe I could just assert that it's at least, at least three. <laughs> at least this will test like that it's vaguely working at all. I don't know. So the test is like now strictly worse, but at least it still does something helpful, I guess. Um, okay, so that's that. This is gonna get re-triggered. This thing's done. Uh, it looks like we have approval on this one, so maybe we should boards it now. Hey, hey, hey. Read from the output channel with the for loop. It should be very similar to, wait, what?
What happened to my... <laughs> I feel like that example is doing what you're trying to do. So I feel like there might be something that you're missing or... You know what you could try, Veranos, is if you wanted to, you could put your example that you're working on into the Go Playground and then paste it to us. And that would probably be a lot easier than trying to figure out what we're talking about since, yeah, we're, our vocabularies are a bit different at the t for the time being, I think. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, yep. <laughs> uh, right. So what were we doing? This thing, this thing. Oh yeah, we were deciding whether we should bores this. I think we're ready to bores this. This thing is passing tests and it's got the LGTM and uh, I think we can bores it. Yay, okay, we're gonna get a yay for this action. <laughs> it's thrilling, it's truly thrilling. <laughs> okay, um, right. Okay, let's, uh. <laughs> One plane loves to put a little smiley face every time that emote comes up or the sound effect comes up. Um Okay. So back to our app stats business here. I think we need to, there's a bunch of stuff to add to our app stats at this point. Ah, note that some fields derived from tracing statements such as byte sent over network are not updated here because they're clicked on event. Okay, you've got a link for us. This is exciting. Okay, let's see if we can live debug this with you. It'll surely be exciting. Yeah, you need you need the range keyword. That's important. Um, doesn't it look something like something like this, right? Is that how it works? I forget what the syntax is. To be honest, for all I do in Go, I very rarely <laughs> use channels. To be honest, I. I Channels don't feel like they're one of my core tools. Um, okay. So we want to add these max memory usage, KV time, and network messages ones. And... All right, so at this point we haven't plumbed in enough stuff just yet, have we? So there's this top level query stat business. I guess maybe, maybe part of it is like we need to unify top level st query stats with the new stuff that we're collecting. Is that kind of the idea here? So back to our trace analyzer.
I guess it kind of just feels like we don't have these sampling stuff set up yet at all. And we, we kind of, right? We do it if we have explain analyze. We do it if we have explain analyze debug. And we do it if we have should collect diagnostic set to true. But we don't have any kind of sampling setting set up yet. Um, So I feel like, to be honest, we may not be quite ready to do this thing that I thought that we could do. It's a bit like, it's kind of too ambitious, right? And the very first step would be, having a sample mode here, right? Where, where this stuff is turned on and then the output is sort of sent via finish and then it's just one, we're not averaging it. I don't think we can ever really be averaging it because of this problem where I just don't think that we're necessarily having sampling on all the time ever, right? Because it could be expensive. So it kind of feels to me like, ah, I don't know. It kind of feels like what we need is to enhance this other method, not this numeric stat business, but really this, um, really this, um, other thing. Where does this other thing live? Explain to tree plan node. Yeah, the sensitive info. This is what I was looking for. Where is sensitive? Oh, okay. So it is actually stored inside of statement statistics. It's just like this is, it just happens to be a like last, it's like happens to be a sample. So I kind of just think we need to add like a sample field and then add stuff to that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I need to not keep messing with this right now though. I just don't think this was a stream appropriate project. I didn't know what I was doing enough guys. It happens. It happens. Um, I'm glad that you didn't put your uh, AWS key in here, Veranos by accident, because I was like, oh no, does this have any kind of, okay, glad you redacted that. Good job. Good job. Definitely don't want to be leaking our AWS keys on stream, right guys? <laughs> Okay. Circle CI environment variables. Okay, good. Good. I'm very glad to hear it. Very good. Best practices. Absolutely great. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, to be honest, I think I think I might call it, you guys. I think I might call it because I didn't have anything else queued up. I was sort of planning to do that, and I feel like it's just not not going to happen today. So I might call it a bit early today, but um, it's been lots of fun, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Let's find someone to raid. Why don't we find someone to raid? That's a good next step here in our world of streaming. Finding someone to raid. How do you like find... Oh, Jean streaming. She's doing good stuff, huh? Oops. How do I like, I always want to find to the uh... programs that generate programs for you. Mm -hmm. PyTorch, on the other hand. I think we might, we might raid Jean. Um, who else is around? Uh, 
Cloud computing with AWS. That sounds kind of fun. I, mean, I don't know who this mastermindio person is, but they seem pretty cool. Let's check out what they're up to. The experience of one application, but not to the same piece of the application. Uh, I've, I've never seen it combined before. Uh, but like I said, I have seen it be multi-tier. I have seen one load balancer where the resources that it is uh, accessing is, is three or four other load balancers. I don't know if they're doing any in different fashions. programming, but this does seem pretty you know, cool. It's, that's okay. It's super it's deep just a, use case when you're talking about stuff. That's like a top that. contender. Mastermind. Um, weighted deal. least connection. I'm not even going to go draw that, but same. Oh, they're thing. doing sort of like uh, a presentation. It's still going to look for least connections, but it's it's, it's interesting. Like CM Griffing, our homie CM Griffing, Melky Dev. A lot of people on right now. A lot of people on. Okay. You know what? I think we're gonna raid. Uh, I think we're gonna raid uh, Mastermindio because this just seems like a cool thing. I haven't checked Please this out before. So uh, give this person a nice hello from me. Send your raid messages and your, uh, you know, large data bank emotes if you've got them. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hoping to be streaming again this weekend. If not, I'll see you next week. But uh, hopefully, we can do another stream this weekend. Have a good weekend, have a good night, and uh, see y'all next time. Bye-bye.